uh, and then we'll hop into our Q&A session where you all have a chance to um, ask them anything and everything you would like to know about <laughs> uh, this process and, and what will be uh, coming up for your um, for these requirements um, for the VMS reporting. So I would like to just really briefly um, go through a quick introduction, uh, only um, those of us that are on video, just to keep it short, if you're okay with that. And so I'm Carly Somerset, I'm with the Gulf Council and I'm a fisheries outreach specialist. Um, Emily? Hey, I'm Emily Mielstein. I'm the Public Information Officer uh, with the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council. I just uh, briefly want to just welcome everybody and tell you thank you for taking the time. Um, we appreciate having you guys here. And hopefully out of this session, the point of this session is that um, at this point, you're going to be able to compare and contrast the different units that are available to you. Um, and, and hopefully you'll walk away from today with a better understanding of the requirements um, and really understanding which one of the units um, you are ready to purchase and install on your vessel by December 13th. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Bill? You know, Carly, I'm actually thinking that everybody will probably introduce themselves as they give their presentation. So maybe just in the interest of time, we, we skip that. Sounds good. All right, Bernie, if you could bring up the PowerPoint, please. I'm sorry, hang on one second. No worries. Carly, if you have it open, you can always just take over the screen as well. I've got it up, Bernie. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm pulling it out of my email. So hang on, Hold Carly. Up. There it is. All right. Move this over. All right, Carly, go ahead and get started. All right, you can see it okay? Yes. Great. All right, so as Emily said, we're going to be uh, discussing the um, phase two uh, requirements for the Southeast for Hire Integrated Electronic Reporting Program, it's also known as CFIRE. Um, so this portion obviously is the VMS uh, requirements, and so, uh, we have the agenda, which we just went over. Um, so just a bit of background on the reporting requirements. Sorry about that. Um, we'll just make this really brief. So the CFIRE program requirements were implemented in two phases. Phase one, uh, many of you are aware because that started January 5th, was the trip dec declarations and electronic trip reports required for each, uh, each fishing trip. Um, phase two, which we'll be discussing today, uh, is that all vessels um, that have uh, charter headboat reef fish permits and or uh, coastal migratory pelagic permits will be required to have a VMS unit on board and operational at all times unless under a power down exemption. And so uh, I believe at the last um, council meeting, it was uh, announced that this final, uh, the final rule did go out and was published and the effective date will be December 13th. So that is when everyone will have to uh, have the operational VMS on the vessel. Um, VMS requirements, the VMS unit must be one that's type approved by NOAA Fisheries. Uh, there are 12 units approved. Two of those are cellular, so the rest are satellite. 
Um, and 10 of the units are actually available with forms. So that means that you uh, don't have to use, you could all use an alternative method, method to submit your trip information, but you don't have to. You could just send it uh, through the EMS unit. Um, some of the units can be uh, operated as either satellite or cellular, but they've only been approved by NOAA as uh, one or the other. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at um, the list of approved units that they will either um, be operated as satellite or cellular, not both. And uh, council is currently drafting a framework action to allow for an exemption um, in the event of VMS equipment failure or malfunction. And it is highly unlikely uh, that this will be in place before the VMS requirements are implemented. Um, so just keep that in mind. We are working on it. Uh, the council will look at an exemption process, but um, it will be a little while before it, there is any final decision on it. And then the reimbursement program, um, it is available through the Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission. It is available to uh, all owners and operators that have purchased an approved VMS device uh, in order to comply with this, um, this program. So these fishery management regulations. Uh, just a couple things to note when you're looking into this reimbursement program and sending the, the form, uh, it has to be the unit that you purchase has to be installed by an approved vendor technician. And uh, the, the maximum that they will reimburse you is $3,100. Um, and the link is here. I'm not going to click on it, but I'm happy to send this out to everyone who's um, registered for this webinar just so you have that. And with that, I will turn it back over to Bernie and we will start the uh, vendor spotlights. Okay, so who am I turning the screen over to? Andy or? Andy. Go. Andy, okay, you've got it. Okay, let me pull up our presentation here. And I'm going to uh, let Kalai uh, start. Let me just put this in full screen. Can everybody see that? Or not yet. Hold on one second. I don't know what happened. Yes. I went to the, uh, we could I went see to my that. email. Here we go. Okay. I don't see that. Okay, hold on. I'm not sure. Okay. There it is. Okay, great. Uh, I'm not seeing it in a full screen presentation. Okay, there we go. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, great, great. So I'm gonna let Kalai start. Okay. Uh, I fleet one VMS solution from Mad Value. Um, Andy, you move to the next screen. Next page, okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kale Wanan. I am I'm the head of solutions uh, platform group from Ad Valley Innovation Singapore. Ad Valley Innovation is a fully owned subsidiary of Ad Valley Technologies Limited, which is a public listed company in Singapore. Ad Valley is a satellite communication equipment manufacturer and a solution specialist for end user applications. Pivotal America is our service partner in the United States offering our iFleet1 VMS solutions. Another partner of Ad Value is Imasat, uh, which is a world leading mobile satellite operator. Uh, Imasat's vegan satellite network, uh, which is used for our VMS service, offers 99.9% .9 service availability with global coverage. So with this introduction, now I pass on to Ms. Andy Kool. Uh, from Pivotal to continue with the rest of the presentations. Andy? Thank you, Kalai. And Thank you, Kalai. Yeah. So uh, to continue where uh, Kalai left off, we, we have the uh, relationships here between the uh, satellite provider, MRSAT, the manufacturer at value, and Pivotel. We are a, a, a distribution partner for both at value and for 
uh, Inmarsat for the airtime. So we kind of sit in the middle, which is uh, nice the way Kalai laid that out. Um, this is how the uh, equipment communicates with uh, with NOAA and with the fisheries. Uh, we've got in this uh, dotted square, you've got the uh, onboard equipment, of course, which consists of uh, the antenna, which would be mounted, of course, on top of the uh, vessel or as high as possible. Um, the below decks unit, the handset, I don't know if you can see that little handset back in there, but that is for uh, voice communication. And then you have a small uh, interface box called the Redport Optimizer. That is a Vivitel product um, that is both a firewall, firewall and allows for wireless access to the terminal for uh, various other uses um, in addition to VMS. All of this below deck equipment uh, communicates with the satellite. There's um, one satellite that covers uh, the entire North American continent, South American continent, uh, and it is a geostationary orbit satellite, which means that it's always in the same place. Uh, it doesn't move around, and uh, if you have signal, you'll always have signal um, with, uh, within Marsat. The uh, signal goes to the satellite, back to the ground station. The ground station routes the uh, data traffic and or voice traffic into the uh, cloud, and then that in turn uh, uh, gives your position and uh, reporting information to NOAA. So there's really uh, three things that our terminal does, four actually. Um, number one, it, it's fully compliant with VMS. Uh, it also provides you an, an additional internet connection which would allow you to get email, uh, phishing and weather data. It has built-in Wi-Fi, uh, which means that smart devices can be used with the terminal for uh, for just about anything you need it for, um, and it provides voice service. Pivotel is a unique provider in that we do uh, give you a U.S. phone number for your vessel, and you have an additional layer of, uh, of emergency communication through MRSAT's 505 calling uh, to the rescue center. Here's a bigger picture of the components uh, with the system. The only thing really not shown here are the cables. Uh, we do have a 15-meter antenna cable that comes with the equipment, which is sufficient for most vessels. Uh, longer cables can be uh, provided or, or, or obtained. The iFleet One terminal, uh, there's, as I mentioned, there's two ways that the best, that there's two things data-wise that the terminal can do. One is fully VMS, and that is a separate, completely separate, always on uh, reporting and um, that will also, it has optional forms of declarations with our service plans, uh, and it also provides you with IP data, voice calls, and SMS. The iFleet One handset is a primary handset, uh, gives you uh, sort of a heads up of what's going on with the terminal, and allows you to make voice calls directly from the handset. There is a, an RJ11 input to the device, which allows you to hook up any ordinary telephone and get a dial tone. So that is an additional feature of the uh, add value VMS terminal. The optimizer box is an onboard firewall, which prevents unwanted data and allows you to uh, use your terminal very efficiently for commercial data. You don't have to worry about the VMS data. That data is covered by whatever rate plan you're on, and that, that uh, rate does not vary by how much data is consumed. The only thing that would vary would be how many voice calls or how much internet you use, which again, uh, I don't want to get off on that tangent here, but it is a very uh, those are very robust features that the add value terminal provides and the optimizer. Other details, these are the most important details. I think part of the reason everybody's here is to find out about pricing. Uh, the terminal bundle that we are offering is $3,599, which would uh, leave an unpaid balance of $499 uh, total after the hardware reimbursement uh, for qualifying vessels. There is a one-time $50 activation fee. Installation cost is not covered by NOAA, but it is, and it is very subjective based on the vessel layout and location. Um, there is a two-year warranty, uh, two years on the uh, the main equipment, the below deck unit and above deck unit, one year on the optimizer, one year on the handset. We do provide 24/7 phone and email support, both through uh, Add Value, uh, Pivotel, and uh, of course the uh, uh, the NOAA um, uh, service, which is not 24/7, but I don't believe. Or correct me if I'm wrong, guys, um, but I think I think it is. And uh, we do offer fault replacement support via hot swap at all major ports. 
here's some here's some information that uh, uh, for our contacts. And if you would like to take a picture of the screen, you'll have my personal email. Uh, you'll have the VMS support email and phone numbers, current and the new one that will be available uh, that should be available very soon. And of course, our website addresses. Uh, one thing I did not mention, I, I apologize. We have eight different rate plans, and uh, the baseline rate plan is $59 a month, which includes position reporting uh, hourly, which is the baseline requirement for uh, for this uh, you know for this uh, requirement. And we also have a zero megabyte uh, data bundle uh, that includes forms and declarations. And then there are several additional rate plans that we have available that that would allow you to uh, pass commercial data. Uh, for your own benefit. And if anybody needs all of the rate plans, please reach out to me and I'll, I'll be happy to send you all of the details. Uh, specifications of the terminals um, and the optimizer, uh, the entire package weighs less than 15 pounds. Um, again, if anyone would like to take a quick picture of this slide, uh, it'll give you all of the specs and I'm happy to email you, uh, you know, uh, separate spec sheets as well. Hey, Andy, so I'm yes, sorry to wrap. Sorry to interrupt. Um, we have to keep moving. So if, if you could. Uh, okay. I was just about done. Again. Just about done. I have 30 seconds Thank you left. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So here's a just a bigger picture of the uh, the terminal and hardware. It is future proofed. Everything uh, uh, is designed to be to be operational with current and future MRSAT satellites. Thank you very much. I would like to take just a quick second and show you. Uh, show you the uh, hardware itself. Uh, Carly, if you could turn my screen off, or do I do that myself? Ah, there we go. Okay, yeah, I'd like to just show you the physical hardware. Here's the antenna. You can see it's not very big or heavy. Hey, Andy, I think we're gonna have to keep moving. We might have yes, some time at the end with if people have questions. Okay, great. So please reach out to me with questions and uh, I'm happy to help any way I can. Thank you, Andy. Really appreciate it. Uh, Thank you, all right, let's move, let's move to uh, Bill McNeely with Faria. Okay, just trying to figure out how I do that now. <laughs> Do you have two screens open or just the one? Yeah, two. Okay, so it's showing the one that has the GoToWebinar on it right now. I can see your cursor moving. Okay. So how do I get that over here then? I think, Bill, you're just going to have to minimize and move your move the window yeah. over. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see if I can do that. Yeah, you can just drag the presentation over onto the screen. There, there you go. Is. We see it. All right, I'm making progress. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, is that coming up now? It is. Okay, so my name is Bill McNeely. Um, work with uh, Faria Beatty. Uh, we used to be actually Faria Watchdog. Um, basically, we've been in uh, type approved VMS since back in 2007. Um, we do um, or have done uh, satellite based um, VMS devices. Our VMS 750 is out there. And for this rollout, uh, we've created and been type approved for uh, what we're calling the FBE term C. So just to go real quick, I know we got five minutes and there's a bunch of other guys that want to get in there. So um, um, so we've been, in, like I said, in, in business with VMS since 2007. There's over 4,000 systems running worldwide, some seven years, some in the Southeast, uh, commercial guys have been running since 2007. Um, as you can see, there's somewhere in Alaska uh, a bunch of the deadliest catch. If you see them on TV, they're using our device. 
We've also got by, uh, devices in China, FFA, Australia, New Zealand, and a full network of dealers and installers. Um, one of the things we've done for this particular rollout is we partnered with CWR, who is a, uh, a marine it's a di uh, distributor. Oh, somebody uh, got a mute there. So for our, our system here, we are the lowest cost provider right now that for year one, there'd be zero cost to you as the, as the uh, fisherman. Um, the system cost is obviously 100% covered by the NOAA reimbursement and free at uh, BD is also doing a one year free of airtime. So when you buy this device, you get reimbursed and you also get the first year of airtime for free. On the second year, the GSM, this is a GSM only device. Um, year two and beyond is only 20 bucks a month. Um, it, the, the plan for 20 bucks a month covers everything. Your GPS, your, your one hour reporting, any email that you might do, all the declarations and catch reporting, all would be contained within that 20 bucks a month. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt, but when you say GSM, we're talking. You're telling me that this is operating a cellular instead of a satellite network. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Just I'm trying sorry. to get the language that the fishermen are using. Yes, cellular. The, yeah, this is um, our device. The FBE term was the the first type approved cellular only device, uh, particularly and rolled out just for the four higher head boat um, boats. So. When we say this this twenty dollars a month, this is just cellular. Yes. Um, where we get into the satellite is obviously in the register. You could use either or. Um, our seven hundred and fifty is a satellite and it is type approved, uh, but that's going to run you about sixty bucks a month in airtime, and also the cost of the system is much higher. Uh, this is what our E turn C looks like. Um, We'll go in, it's a seven inch touch screen. All the forms are included in there. Um, you don't need a separate device. You don't need to use the phone or the tablet. Uh, we do have email capability in there as well. Uh, we provide a website for vessel owners. They can go in and see the track. They can look at positions. Um, they can see where they've been. And we hold that available on the web for uh, up to seven years. Uh, on the front page, you get all of the system notifications that you need to make sure your device is connected, um, that you are reporting as required. It'll also show you when you go out of GS, uh, cellular range and when you come back into cellular range, just so you know when that, that device has reconnected. Um, we do also include a backup battery. So if you lose power, this thing will continue to report as long as that battery is fully charged. We run an Android operating system on this, uh, makes it easy for any changes, updates, OTAs, uh, anything of that sort we can do uh, either over the air or through the Android store. And the good thing about our device is we've also included the GPS and GSM antennas internal to the device. So you don't have to mount uh, a secondary antenna. So this is basically a screenshot of all the different features that are on the front uh, screen of your device. And again, I won't go through all of them, but it, it gives you all the indications of your cellular, your GPS. Uh, this tells you your VMS status is um, connected and ready. Uh, this makes sure you know you have all the latest and greatest uh, uh, updates. And then it also will give you whatever the last position report that you're that the device has uh, recorded. Uh, as I said, the uh, logbook and the declaration are both included in the in the uh, FBE term C. So you don't, like I said, have to use a phone or a tablet. The forms here, what we're showing is the first page of the four hire logbook. And I'm sure some of you guys may already be familiar with them. Um, but any of these click on keyboard comes up and you enter the data. Uh, two pages, the species caught, and then at the end, you just hit submit. Uh, this is um, a screenshot of the four hire, the uh, declaration. So before you go out, 
whether it's an intended or non-intended, and then you select, you know, whether you're a for hire, a charter, or a head boat, and then again, send the report so your declarations get sent right from your device. The big feature of the eTurn C is the easiest installation uh, the dealer will have or your installer will have. Basically, uh, power and ground for the device, we provide the harness. Um, and then there's a four screw uh, mounting bracket. Uh, this is kind of a quick shot of uh, the eTerm C with our email. We use a K9 email client. Um, basically, there's a, a little icon on the bottom of this front screen. You click on that, you can send email, you can receive email. Uh, again, as long as it, you're within GS or cellular range. Uh, if you create it, once you get back in, it will send. And, and obviously, you can access that right from your front screen. Hey, Bill, you got about two more minutes. Sorry to interrupt okay. you. Nope, going fast. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I appreciate so, it. So there's a, a recent addendum to the forms that just came out, and it was a suggestion. Um, I've included it in here because a lot of the things that had come out of, I guess, the last meeting was, could we make changes to the forms? And just wanted to note here that all those changes that were requested are already uh, part of the forms package that we have in the eTerm C. So what we're doing right now is because of our partnership with CWR, uh, we're providing a one day delivery. So CWR already has about 250 units in stock. Uh, basically, if you place an, if the dealer that you go through places an order before four o'clock, uh, they'll ship it out and you'll have it the next day. Um, we offer a one-year warranty and what we've also included was an advanced replacement. So if something ever happens to your device, you go to the dealer, he contacts us, we'll overnight uh, a unit to you so you would have it the next day, uh, plug that one in, send the other one back to us. Uh, that way you can keep fishing. We know how important that is when you've got, uh, when you've got trips lined up. Uh, obviously, it's an Android product. It's very rugged. It's very, very easy to use. Uh, touch screen is, is very clear, and uh, the buttons for your forms and stuff are very easy to use. And then again, if you have more information, you can contact CWR Electronics directly, uh, or you can send us something at fariabd.com. And that's as fast as I can go, Emily. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I really appreciate it. Sorry to interrupt everyone. We're just trying to keep it moving. Um, nope, no problem. All excellent information that you guys are giving. I think this is super helpful. Um, we're going to move to uh, Henry. All right, we see your, yeah, we can see your screen. We just don't see a PowerPoint. We see a nice fairway, it looks like, on a golf course. Close. <laughs> there it is. There How's that? Looks good. Good morning, everybody. My name is Henry. I am from Met Ocean. And a quick thank you to the council for giving us the opportunity to do this. A little bit about Met Ocean is a Canadian company with offices in the US and in the United Kingdom. Met Ocean is one of uh, Iridium's biggest partners, probably even the biggest partner for Iridium. Our product is called the Omnicom BMS. Uh, Met Ocean has been a major vendor for DFO in Canada, with about more than 50% of the active vessels in Canada are uh, supplied by Met Ocean. In 2001, in this year, Met Ocean purchased Aurora Fleet Management, the Omnicom technology. Aurora Fleet Management used to be called Boat Tracks. Some of you may know that name. Boat Tracks has been around since 2004. We are fully type approved by NOAA as well in all the regions in the US. Our product, the Omnicom, was designed specifically for maritime use, um, using the Iridium Constellation, which means you've got coverage virtually everywhere. It's got an internal battery, which will give you up to 72 hours um, operation, low power consumption, anything from 10 to 36 volts, surge protection, tamper proof, the stress and test buttons, this lives on this junction box. If you press the test button, you will get a positive confirmation via these LEDs. Your test works, your system is online. If you press the distress button, you'll also get a message saying or an LED by showing you 
nor the stress has been received by the shore side. The system also comes with a ruggedized 10 inch Windows tablet, a touchscreen tablet. And this tablet, when you boot it up, oh, sorry, let's go back. What's in the box? What do you get when you order this product? You get everything you need all the brackets, all the cables, uh, all the brackets, all the nuts and bolts. You get the tablet with the charger, and the tablet has this nice strap on the back for easy use and handling. When you boot up the tablet, let's look at the typical installation first. Typical installation, you've got the dome on the outside. It doesn't need to be the highest point on the boat, but it does need to have a clear view of the sky. You've got your junction box inside, somewhere where you can get to it, because you want to see these LEDs and the buttons, and your tablet connects to your junction box via USB cable. You can mount the dome either horizontally on a railing, on a vertical mast, or on a flat surface. All these brackets are supplied in the box. When you boot up the tablet, it goes straight into the Prisma Vessel app. You cannot do anything else on this tablet. It's locked down. It's optimized for touchscreen use. It's very clean. It's got some status. As you can immediately see, I'm seeing 14 satellites. It's got some information down here how the system is working. Support, if you have an issue, support may ask you to read them what's going on here. These two buttons are the two current forms. If more forms appear, they will appear as buttons here. When you select the, the button, it goes straight into the form. These forms are all auto-filled, the fields that we know. The other fields are all drop-down boxes. And if there's a free form field, an on-screen keyboard will appear for you. Some additional features which we provide in addition to the NOAA requirements, weather on demand, you can select weather, select the area you want, and our support team will send you a weather report for that area copied from the National Weather Service. Some other data, you can request news, sports scores, even fish prices if you want, and our support team will provide those to you. There's various ways to communicate from this unit. You can send a message to the shore, to another boat. You can do an email, even a voice message. How that works is you type the message, you say which number it has to go to. Our support team will make the call and deliver the message as is to whoever you want to send it to. In addition to those features, we have a website, a subscription website called Prisma Connect. It's not mandatory. You can sign up or not. Prisma Connect gives you short to ship messaging. For instance, somebody can type, please pick up bread and milk on the way home, your wife, and you will receive this message on your tablet. Alert management is done from here. And you can also um, real-time tracking. You can see where the vessel is. Most important, this is completely private. Only you can see this. When you sign up for this service, you tell us which login emails are allowed to log into your account and see the stuff, and nobody else can see where you've been fishing. Our support team, we provide support uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year, even Christmas. We do English, Spanish, and French, if you desire. Um, our support team have, every one of them, have at least 15 years experience in customer support. And our VMS specialist, it's a lady sitting here, Claudette, has been doing VMS for 15, or sorry, for 18 years. She knows everything that needs to know about VMS support. Lastly, and most importantly for you guys, our prices, suggested retail price, 2599. Airtime for one position per hour, it's $45 a month. And additional data, $1.75 per kilobyte. And that is all, and it's five minutes and 46 seconds. Any questions? Thank you, Henry. I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to hold questions for the Q&A session, um, so that way everyone will be able to come back and, and ask as many as they want to all of you. Uh, so we'll keep going. Um, move to Craig with SkyMate. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties on this end. Um, I do know the volume is going to be quite low on this. So for those of you at home, if you could just turn up your volume for this, that would be helpful. We've got it full blast on our side, but um, not sure how it's going to come through. 
So if you could play whenever you're ready. Hello everyone, my name's Craig. I'm the product manager here at SkyMate. And today I'm Uh-oh, I think we lost audio. I did. <laughs> Hello? What were you? We, we lost, we we lost, lost audio. audio. You lost audio? Okay. Yeah, it was it was working until the slide switched. All right. Let me try again. Raise your hand, Emily and Carly, if you can hear this. System has been designed for an easy to use, affordable solution to cover your VMS requirements and at the same time providing you a satellite platform for which you can take advantage of some of our additional features such as email, text messaging, weather, SOS, sea state information, and boat monitoring and tracking. The system retails for $3,000 and is fully reimbursed. The Skyview 1600 system includes four components. These components are the black box, the antenna, the SOS keypad and an Android tablet. The system runs on either 12 or 24 volts and has been designed for minimal power draw, only drawing four watts while transmitting. The front panel of the black box includes four LEDs to let you know the system is working correctly at a quick glance. Ernie, it sounds like there's a lot of rustling and we can't hear it. SOS buttons to be used in case of an emergency, a message waiting notification, letting you know if you have unread messages, and a sentry on off button. I will talk a little bit more about sentry later in this presentation. The system includes a small antenna, only being five inches long, four inches wide, and two inches tall. The antenna can be installed either clutch mounted or onto a standard antenna one inch 14 mount. The antenna needs to be installed somewhere where it can see the sky. An Android tablet is also included. Ernie, we lost audio. While you can connect and use any device with Wi-Fi, including your cell phone or laptop, the tablet included must remain on board. Four higher forms are easy to complete and include a form log history. The log history allows you to select previously completed logs and edit them so that you do not need to complete the entire form for each trip. An example would be is if you're taking the same trip today as you made yesterday, you can select yesterday's trip from the log history, edit the date and time for today's information, and submit as a new trip. The SkyMate service plan for the Gulf for Hire program is $24.99 per month. This includes all of the position reporting and forms required for the program. All SkyMate systems have complete global coverage, allowing you to use the system wherever you go, including offshore. Each SkyMate system has a dedicated email address and an SMS number assigned to the boat. You will be able to send and receive emails and text messages while offshore directly from your phone connected to the SkyMate M1600. We also have chat apps for both Android and iPhone, allowing you to share your location and to communicate with other SkyMate systems and people onshore with these apps. On top of the ability to communicate while offshore, we provide weather information. We have the NOAA zone reports, point forecast, and buoy weather information. The zone reports provide a text version of the NOAA forecast. Point forecast provides wind and wave or atmospheric information every six hours for up to seven days. And the buoy weather allows you to see the current and historic weather information from all the buoys in the Gulf. 
Our sea state overlays give you the information you need to find fish faster. Available in both high definition and cloud free, sea surface temperature and chlorophyll charts can be downloaded to help find the temperature breaks and eddies. Altimetry charts allow you to see the upwellings and downwellings, helping you find the nutrition rich seas. Sea current charts can be downloaded to find the speed and direction of the ocean currents. When using the Mazusport fishing app, you can overlay multiple charts and see your live altimetry. We also partner with Ross, who provide custom sea state analysis and recommended fishing hotspots. Sentry is additional hardware that can be paired with the M1600, allowing you to monitor your vessel. With Sentry installed, you can monitor and control up to 16 different sensors on the vessel. A couple of examples would be high water alarms, bilge sensors, shore power sensors, battery sensors, and even security sensors. Not only can you see the current status, but these systems can be set up to send you emails and text messages when something changes. An example would be is if the boat battery drops below a certain voltage, uh, the system will send you a text message to notify you. On top of monitoring, you also have the power to control these sensors. Either turn them on and off from home or set up rules on the vessel. SkyTracker is our at-home tracking service. It allows you to see the current or historic positions of a fleet or vessel overlaid onto a map. With SkyTracker, you can monitor all of your vessels and instant message them from the same screen. Right now, we are offering a limited time promotion for which you can choose either one year of free service on the Gulf for Hire plan or a free iPad. Uh, the promotion also includes one year subscription to the Mazu Sport Fishing iPad app one year subscription to SkyTracker, and two free ROFs analysis. The total value of this package is over $700. The SkyMate M1600 BMS not only provides you with an affordable, easy to use, easy to install solution for your BMS requirements, it also provides you with offshore features such as email, weather, sea state, boat monitoring, and even at home monitoring. That is the five minute overview of the SkyMate M1600 system. You can also reach me at sales at skymate.com or 703-961-5800. Thanks, Craig. Really appreciate all of that information. Um, we will move to Nick. Can everybody hear me okay? You sure can. All right, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. My name is Nick Salvi. I'm with Woods Hole Group. Uh, Woods Hole Group is a wholly owned subsidiary of CLS. It's based in Toulouse, France. And CLS has been a global leader in environmental solutions and fisheries for over 40 years. Um, Woods Hole Group has been a type approved supplier in good standing to National Marine Fisheries Service since the beginning of the program. And uh, we, have, uh, we have a traditional product like many of the products you've seen um, from my, my associates and colleagues this morning um, for the federal program. But what I'm happy to talk to you about today is our NEMO device. And I'm gonna start off with a, a simple 30 second video for you all. Am I sharing my screen okay? You are, we can see your, yep, we see the video. Okay, great. So uh, Nemo was specifically designed with simplicity in mind right from the get-go. I'll show you a little video and then I'll take you through it.
Okay, you should be able to see my Nemo tech sheet right now. Um, for those charter fishermen that are using the Vessel app or the eTrips mobile smartphone apps that are free and downloaded, I know that many of you are. Um, for those of you that are already using that to report your, your catch and effort to NMFS, uh, Nemo should be a really nice complimentary product for you to complete the phase two of the Seafire rollout. Um, first, Nemo is very simple. It takes four screws to install it. Um, I'm not sure if you can see me or my Nemo tech sheet. I'm going to turn it back to me here. We can see it, Nick. We can see you in the, the sheet. Okay, great. Um, it just slides and locks into its docking station, which is uh, again, only four screws. Um, Nemo comes with a two-year warranty. Um, it's one of the cellular products that's been specifically developed uh, for this application and for coastal and state programs. Um, when outside the cellular footprint, Nemo will data log all of its positions which is quite robust. It could data log at a five minute interval up to six months worth of positions in its onboard memory. And when you come back into the cellular footprint, it'll automatically upload all of its positions into the cloud and then into our software. Um, each subscription, you will receive uh, personal access to view your vessel so your loved ones and partners can actually uh, look after your vessel and your well being while you're out at sea. Um, Nemo also has uh, Bluetooth capabilities for the electronic logbook program and uh, linkage to vessel and e-trips uh, reports that you may be submitting already. Um, uh, the primary means of communication is cellular for Nemo, but it has a satellite backup capability uh, on board inside, inside the device as well. And that's for assistance and distress. Uh, while you're out at sea, should you come into a bad situation, you're able to push uh, the red button that you see there on the screen. That's going to send a assistance and distress notification to people that you uh, you populate and deem deem necessary when we establish your account. Um, one of the most attractive features of Nemo is that it's solar powered. Um, it's also charged by a, a mini USB cable. Um, but once fully charged in the Gulf of Mexico sun, uh, Nemo is going to operate untethered for several weeks and months. Um, when it needs to be recharged, it has an LED indicator that you can see the, the, the little lights there to the, to the side of the red button. Um, and that LED indicator is going to let you know that you need to top up the power. The statistics we've been receiving from the field already in many deployments in, in Europe uh, and in Asia Pac, uh, the solar the solar panels really performing beautifully, um, and so with a one hour ping rate for Sea Fire, uh, we're super confident you're going to be able to keep fishing uh, untethered for many many months. Um, let's see what else. The LED indicators are helpful. They'll they'll confirm low power and recharge alert, GPS connectivity. Uh, Nemo also has audible alerting, so if NMFS should imp implement any closed areas or marine protected areas, um, we would populate those geo zones on behalf of you and National Marine Fisheries Service, and we'll send you an audible alert if you're in the wrong place while out at sea. Um, we'll get to the pricing. Nemo's priced at a, a very attractive uh, $549 retail. And um, for airtime, uh, the cellular, the solar, the software subscription to view your vessel online um, is $349 per month. If for some reason you didn't want that uh, satellite backup and distress assistance, you could get a cellular only plan, um, and that would be $249 per year. So you don't have a, a monthly administrative burden uh, of a monthly bill, it's a simple annual subscription and you're good to go. Um, I mentioned we have a two-year warranty. We have an activation fee of $24.95 and a flat rate shipping uh, fee of $25. So um, 
anyone that wants to inquire, you can send a note to support at woodsholegroup.com and we'll send you a very straightforward, simple template for you to access the portal and make your transaction. Uh, we can ship it directly to you. Um, the Nemo will be available either directly to the fishermen themselves or through preferred resellers within the Gulf of Mexico. And that's it. We're also emailing out the reimbursement form for NOAA to you. And um, that's about all we have to say about Nemo this morning. We're, we're very confident in it. Uh, we're getting great results back from the field. And thanks again for listening. Thank you, Nick. Really appreciate all the information. Um, thanks to all the presenters, uh, vendors for providing this. We will uh, move into the Q&A session. So just a few things before uh, we start that. Um, everyone attending is welcome to uh, ask whatever questions you have to the vendors. Um, you should have a raise your hand feature. So we're going to use that just to keep everything um, as organized as possible. And, and thanks for bearing with us and some of our technical dif difficulties we've had so far. Um, but just uh, if you would like to ask a question, please um, use the little raise your hand feature and we will um, take those in the order we get them. And we're going to uh, also have, um, we have John Navarro available and Chris Price. Um, they are both, uh, you know, reseller installers. So if there's any questions that are more related to that, uh, feel free to ask those as well. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, use the raise your hand. And if you can't seem to get it working, we will uh, work with you to, to be able to, to fix that so that you can ask questions. All right, Carly, right, so I do see a hand up and I see Mr. Mike Reagan. So I'm, Mike, I'm going to unmute you. Um, and it looks like you're muted on your end. So you need to find your mute button and hit unmute and you'll be able to ask a question. There you go. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. I was just, uh, with all these, I appreciate uh, everybody uh, coming and checking on, uh, giving us information on all this. Um, the, uh, the pricing, I guess, is a big thing for us. Um, everybody seems to be able to cover the Gulf okay. Um, is just how do we uh, get a hold of everybody uh, real quick uh, so that we can get this all started for us? So, Mike, um, the contact information, what we'll do is we will uh, send an email out to you as an attendee after this webinar that includes contact information for each one of uh, the folks that spoke today, along with their presentations. Um, there is also a website on the NOAA Fisheries webpage uh, that is dedicated to the Southeast reporting requirements um, and, uh, for the for hire fleet. And uh, all of the information on the vendors can be found there. But like I said, we will follow up uh, this session with an email to you with the information that you're looking for. Well, thank you, Emily. Absolutely. Thank you for, for joining us today. Yes. Okay, next up is Bill Schwalm. Bill, you are unmuted from my end. There you are. Okay, well, thank you very much. I have a question for the SkyMate um, uh, vendor, Craig Myers. On your um, monthly rate, is the weather and email information included in that price, or is that an extra add-on? So the price, the $24.99, includes all of your NOAA requirements. Uh, forms and position reporting. The systems are built so you can use all the other features, but it is pay as you go at a dollar seventy-five per k uh, for the personal use. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Great. Thank you for joining us today, and thanks for asking that question, Bill. All right, so next up we have Gavin Gray followed by Carolyn Wood. Gavin, I am going to unmute you. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, thanks for, uh, let me ask a question here. Uh, more on, we have an existing system that was used for a commercial vessel and looking on the forms to apply to get this moved over for the for hire charter. It also includes requiring an installation when it's an existing system, 
do we have to have it certified or is there anything in place in order to uh, change it from a commercial over to the for hire VMS application? Well, so the first question is, do you know if your existing system is approved for use in this program? It is on your list, yes. It is on the list. Okay, awesome. Um, well, in that case, you know, I'm not, and it's already installed. Yes. So my understanding would be that you would just have to contact um, the manufacturer of the device and ask them, um, you know, to, to add the for hire forms um, so that you can be compliant with the for hire system. And then if it's already installed and it's already on your vessel, um, again, I think you'd have to ask the manufacturer, but um, you know, you wouldn't really have to pay for it to happen again, right? We just have to make sure that you get it up and running for this for hire program. So I, okay. I would go ahead and reach directly out to your vendor and, and work with them on a case by case basis for that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us today, Gavin. Okay, Carolyn Wood, uh, let's see. You are unmuted, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I have a question for Nick Salvi. Um, on a unit he did not discuss today though, it's the Triton Advanced, and I was wondering what the monthly costs are on that unit. Hey, Carolyn, thanks for your question. Um, the We have a number of tariffs pub tariffs published for the for the triton um, and one of our more popular ones is our service bundle uh, which is 54 dollars per month that's for the iridium product for for the nemo that i was presenting today this is 349 dollars for the whole year um, and again the, the price point on the hardware is 549 dollars but triton is our more well-established federal product that's um, out in every region for NOAA. And yeah, it, it varies. If um, if you want to send a note to our support at woodsholegroup.com, we can give you the specific tariff you may be um, asking for. But we have about six or eight we have published with NMFS. I hope that helps you. Thank you. I, I will reach out to them. Great, thanks Thank for your you. question and thanks for joining us, Carolyn. Um, I don't currently see, oh, I do. I see a hand from Donna uh, Bellius. I'm sorry, I'm sure I butchered that. Uh, Donna, are you there? You're unmuted. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, people butcher it all the time. <laughs> I, I have one of those um, names too. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so I had, I had a question. Um, and again, thank you to all the vendors for doing this presentation and thank you for the council for doing this. Um, I had a question for the Omnicom and for the SkyMate. Um, I was trying to look at it really quickly. For the form submission for both of those systems, um, is is there a way, and it may have been on a second page, um, if you uh, hail out and you put your information in, you head out, it's just really, really rough. Your customers you know, don't want to do this, and you turn around and come back. Is there a way on those form submissions to indicate that you did not take that trip and you came back? And, and Donna, just to add, as these guys are sort of uh, preparing the response, one of the questions that we've heard quite a bit is the opposite, where if you hail out and you are on a trip for a half day and it's going really well and they say, why don't we stay for the other half of the day? And then you would be offshore um, and you'd want to sort of modify your hail out because you'd be four hours late, right? So I think that works both ways. Um, yes, Just correct. to clarify before we get an answer there. Correct, yes. Hi, Donna. This is Henry from uh, uh, MetOcean. Currently, the form does not allow you to do that. There's no field on the form to do it, but you can send a message to our support team and they can let Noah know, look, this vessel came back early, no catch reported. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Hi, Donna. This is Craig at SkyMe. So with our system, um, you wouldn't be able to edit a previously submitted form but you can submit a new form and the old one will be in your history log. So you could simply bring up the old form from your history log, change whatever changed, and then submit it again. It'll take a minute or two to do that. Okay, awesome, thank you. Thank you, Donna, thanks for joining us today. Okay, I don't see any hands up. Just uh, to remind everybody that joined us today, this is a, a really good opportunity for you to ask questions of the vendors. 
about their specific units or as Donna just did, you know, sort of trying to compare two of the units that might be of interest to you. Um, so if you have any questions that you'd like to ask the vendors, it's a really good time to find that raise your hand icon um, and we will give you an opportunity to ask that question. And Emily, I just wanted to add that I'll be at the Orange Beach um, upcoming meeting. So I'll be there with Nemo and be able to show and tell and be there in person to answer you know, folks' questions and meet some captains. Nick, well, I'm I'm letting captains mull over whether or not they want to uh, they want to raise their hand. That's a really good opportunity for us um, to, to to let everybody know we are having a council meeting in Orange Beach, Alabama, from October 25th through the 28th. Uh, we have invited all of the vendors to come and put their displays in the hallway and talk to folks. Um, you know, that would be a good place if you're in the area to even come and probably work on purchasing your unit and making that decision. What we're also going to do is on Tuesday, October 26th, we are going to do a special question and answer session with leadership from NOAA Fisheries and from the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council, as well as all of the available vendors. And uh, we are going to sort of do something similar here. We will not be giving that vendor spotlight where everybody gets to explain their unit, but it's going to be an opportunity for fishermen to directly ask the policymakers and all of the vendors involved um, questions about the, these upcoming requirements. And so just mark your calendars for that event. That's going to be both virtual and in-person. Um, and again, it is on the evening of October 26th after the council meeting adjourns. Um, and if you are in the Orange Beach area and you want to come talk to these guys in person, a number of them will be um, at the meeting displaying their units uh, and, and ready to talk to you more in depth. So after that, I still don't see any hands up. Uh, Emily, if I can follow up with Nick, that Faria Beatty has also uh, signed up to be there, uh, myself, Jason, and also... Uh, CWR, John Navarro will be there with us as well. So they can ask any questions about, you know, getting the unit, how quickly and all that kind of stuff. We'll have one there as well, uh, up and running. Um, and I think one more thing, if anybody's listed, I forgot in our PowerPoint that our, our retail price was 1995. And again, it's all fully reimbursed um, to go with that one year free airtime. Thanks, Bill. And uh, since you mentioned um, the, that you'd also be at the Orange Beach we, and, and John Navarro, uh, we do have some, John and um, Chris will, will both be at the Orange Beach meeting. They are uh, distributors, retailers, installers. So uh, they're also on this webinar. If anyone has any questions uh, relating to um, more on that end, feel free to ask them as well. Just one more quick thing, uh, Add Value and Pivotel will also be at the Orange Beach meeting. So if you're there, please come by and say hello and take a look at our equipment. Okay, it looks like we do have two hands up. So, you know, the, the patient bird gets the worm on this one. So uh, I'm gonna go with Emilio first. Emilio, uh, you are unmuted on our end. Yeah, uh, I may have missed it, but I don't know. The uh, installation, a lot of these are bundled. So is that included in the in the bundle, or is there like a separate fee for installation of any of these products? And do they recommend, or do they have their own installers because they have to be installed by a certified technician? So I don't, I don't think I heard any anything about that. Okay, so I'll start um, with that. And, and one of the things that, that I heard today was that some of the, the folks, you know, that were presenting on their units were sort of selling, putting the selling point about how easy it was to install. You know, I heard four screws and a plug, um, and then some of them are a little bit more technical, especially the ones that have the extra bells and whistles that, you know, monitor your vessel and things like that. So just the, the process from our end it, um, is, from my understanding, is that um, the technicians, it, it, it will say that they need to be installed by a certified technician. Now those technicians are defined by each installer. And so, or I'm sorry, by each um, manufacturer of the, in each product. Uh, as far as the, the price, I'm sure it varies by unit. I don't think that any of them quoted the price of the, or quoted the price of installation along with um, their, 
uh, their unit price, but maybe you guys can speak to that. And to follow up on that, the installation is not reimbursable, is it? No, nope. So the installation and the monthly fees are not reimbursable. That is correct. Right. Um, Emily, I'll, I'll, talk about, I'll talk about Nemo. It's, um, it's a DIY install. So if you're going through your reseller or you're doing it yourself, we're going to certify you or your reseller. And we've established that um, with the Southeast office. So it's four screws, charge it, and you're ready to go. So I think that's a big difference maker to, as you're considering your purchases. Any other feedback from the manufacturers on the line? Yeah, so the, the SkyMate unit is also built to be a do-it-yourself install um, in the recreational marketplace. Um, with the VMS systems, you do have to have an installer put it on. It's a very simple installation. Run a single antenna cable and plug it into power. Um, the pricing is dependent on the dealer. So we do have a list of dealers on our website. You'd have to contact a couple of them to figure out availability and, and their pricing. Uh, but in general, it's a very quick installation. Uh, Bill from Faria Beatty, uh, same, same concept here. You know, uh, in our presentation, we showed that it's basically two wires, power ground, and four screws. So um, although it is a do-it-yourself by the requirement that you need a certified installer, um, you can also reach out on our website for a dealer locator. Um, and again, like everyone else will, will tell you, the, the installation is not included. Uh, that's something you work out with your installer for pricing and timing and all that good stuff. So. Thanks, Bill. I think um, unless any of the other vendors want to speak, Chris Price may want to speak to that point as far as um, installation. Okay, Chris, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Here you go, Chris. Are you there? Good morning. Thank you all for y'all's time doing this. I have a question for all the vendors. Um, one of the questions we're getting a lot, we got folks that are inside dry storage that are coming up, that are doing the SAT system. Is there add-ons coming down the road to some of these systems is so they can do both sides i'm not sure can i understand you, the question can, can you repeat the question for a lot of our smaller charter boats they're inside dry storage with a metal roof so the satellite systems are not going to do the 24-hour reporting you know when the boats are not being used do we have a cell backup system for some of these coming out? So I, I can speak to the Omnicom unit. It does have a, a cell phone modem inside the unit, but it has not been type approved as a cellular system. So we are going through that, or we will be going through that type approval uh, in the future. But that's going to be able to work uh, even when it's stored under a metal roof, yes. Okay, like I said, and other option was these units are transmitting 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if they are not hooked to shore power, you know, we're doing battery drain. I know the Nemo system has it built in with the solars are pretty neat. Just other options that, you know, needs to be thought of on the installs for customers. That's the only questions I had. Thank you all. All right. You, you, thank you, you Chris. You raise a good point with Nemo. There's something called parasitic power draw, like to your point, uh, Chris, that won't won't happen with Nemo given the solar power nature of it and just this the simple recharge. So uh, again, something to consider when you're when you're weighing your options. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so we're going to move on to Mark Greer. Mark, uh, you are unmuted from my end. Are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Good to hear from you. I have a quick question for you, Emily, and one for Nick. First of okay. all, is it my understanding that your program goes with the existing programs that we're using on our tablets, so therefore we would continue putting the data in on our tablets like we have been all year, and yours sends the signal? Emily, the question I have for you, 
is I haven't heard anyone say, what is the time frame on the reimbursement from NOAA? That's it. Oh, well, great. So uh, let me give that a start, Mark. Um, so the answer from me is that I have no idea how long that process takes um, for the reimbursement. Uh, if, if that's what you're asking, if, if the idea here is how long does it take from from when when you submit your reimbursement to when you get it. Um, Rich, it looks like Rich Malinowski just raised his hand and I bet he knows. So let's ask him. See, I don't know everything, but I know how much we Can you hear me okay? We can. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. It's been great. It's a great learning experience, I think, for all of us. Um, Mark, um, good to hear from you. The uh, reimbursement program, once you send in the application, I've been hearing it's been taking about a month or so um, to, get, to get, a, get your reimbursement returned to you. Um, but as more demand and more people are signing up for it, I would think the program might get a little slower just because there's processing more. But it looks like Kelly Spalling has raised her hand and, and she can even talk to it more, um, our VMS uh, coordinator out of headquarters. All right, Kelly, you are unmuted for my end. Thank you for chiming in, Rich. Kelly, are you there? It looks like you're unmuted from both ends, but I can't hear you. All right, so Mark, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble getting um, Kelly's audio going. Um, so I don't, I don't know if I have further details from you. Kelly, I'm gonna give you one more opportunity here. Kelly, are you there? Well, shucks. All right, Mark, you're still unmuted. It looked like you just raised your hand. Yes, I didn't get the response back from Nick on that question. And yes, I had already talked to Rick about a lot of this. So I'm assuming this is the program that he was telling me about. And I, so I thank every, and I thank Rick for getting back in because he's my great friend. But my other question was, is this program with the Nino and using your existing tablet the way we've been doing it, is it a program that's going to be established long term or are we going to be forced later to switch to one of the other type of systems? Because I'm going to have to do that eventually. I'd rather do it now versus later. And that's my question. Is this going to be established that we could do this long term using this system that we're already used to with his system? Or are we going to have to convert to this other system? Yeah, I think Mark's question's a good one, and I think it's really about uh, dual permitted vessels. So if he ha if he already has one of the more established systems like our Triton, for example, uh, that has the tablet and the and the regional forms, um, he would not require a new tracker beacon um, for the Seafire program. That's my understanding. Maybe maybe Rich can comment on that. But Mark Nemo is a great fit for a, a vessel that uh, a charter fisherman that's been that hasn't been installed with with one of the other systems and has been using the vessel app or the eTrips mobile app and needs to complete the the tracking part of the compliance you know that's coming into effect in December. I hope that answers your question, but. My understanding is, again, the dual permitted vessels that are already equipped with a VMS tracker with NMFS um, are already compliant for CFIRE. Okay. Emily, Great. if I could jump in real quick. Uh, just, just from experience, uh, back in, I'll go back all the way back to 2007, 2008, when we did the Southeast rollout for commercial uh, we handled um, hundreds of the reimbursements through Pacific states. And usually if, um, like you said, the rollout's December 13th. If you're buying your unit now or within the next month, um, usually the reimbursement would come back within two to three weeks. Um, right. But he, he's right. As you get closer to December 13th, and uh, like we all know here, um, everybody buys one on the 12th and submits for reimbursement. It's probably going to take a little bit longer. That's really good insight. I appreciate that addition. Uh, okay, so we were going to move on. Uh, Carolyn Wood has her hand up. Carolyn, you are unmuted again. 
Yes, again, my question is for Nick Salvi. Um, I have purchased a Triton. Um, could you tell me if a list of certified installers is also available at support at woodshole.com? It is, and it's it's also available on our website, Carolyn. Okay. So e either way, if you submit a note to our support team, we'll take care of you there too. Okay, thank you, that's it. Thank you. All right, thanks, Carolyn. Okay, so we've got about, oh, eight minutes remaining. There we go. Um, I see Kelly's hand back up, so I'm gonna give her one more chance. Kelly, you are unmuted on my end, are you there? I think so. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, okay, so I just wanted to give a little clarification on the reimbursement. So it, it normally it would take about two to three weeks. And again, right, if there's a, a huge influx, it may last longer uh, or take longer. But we are doing our best to prepare for that. We have trained up some extra people at our help desk, and we've notified Pacific States to be ready. So hopefully, um, it, we, it will still be kept down to about three or four weeks. That's our that's our goal. That's great. Thank you so much yeah. for, for chiming in there, Kelly. Uh, I do Can see I, a hand up from Jeff sorry. White. Oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to ask Kelly a question that, that would probably pertain to all the fishermen, too. Are they still required to contact the help desk for that confirmation number? Is that still part of the process? <laughs> yes. So um, once the units are activated, they would contact our help desk uh, to make sure that our help desk can see the unit. Once our help desk uh, ensures that we can see the unit reporting, then they will give the fisherman a, a confirmation number. That confirmation number goes on the form that is submitted to Pacific States Marine Fisheries uh, Commission, who is the group who will send the check. Oh, great. That's really good insight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if everybody goes to the Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission, their, web, their uh, homepage, you'll find the vessel monitoring system as one of their projects. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and if you click on there, it will give you the entire procedure for the reimbursement process. Great, and we will, uh, we will actually link that information in the email that we send to all the attendees today as well. Okay, so we're gonna move to, uh, to Jeff White in the last couple of minutes. Uh, Jeff, you are unmuted on my end. Outstanding, thank you, Emily, and thanks everybody for the presentations. I heard a question um, from from someone about the ability to use existing tablets, and I don't know if that was answered and I missed it. Can could you guys go back to that um, that question? I think, I think that was Mark possibly, and it may yeah. If you want to speak to that, Jeff, it may not have been answered. Oh, I wasn't sure I was the best person to answer it. Uh, <laughs> from <laughs> I may be wrong. So if it was Mark, uh, feel free to speak up again. But I think it was, you know, if they have, can all these units, um, will they work with Vessel and E-Trips? There's Mark. Okay, here we go. Mark, you are unmuted. My question was, which I had talked to Rich Malowski about this already, was the next unit would correspond with our vessel entry data that we're already doing, whether it be a computer or a tablet or whatever. And the question was, was it still that way if we go with your system and would it be long term or were we be forced to switch to one of the other top systems next year? Because if that's the case, it doesn't make sense. You might as well go and do the right. So, That's so Mark, the, the NEMO unit is approved at the same level that any of the other units are approved. So, um, you know, for all in, intents and purposes, you know, that that approval should not expire any sooner than anybody else is. Um, <laughs> and, and it is my understanding that with the NEMO unit, you would bring your own device to report what I uh, through eTrips or Vessel. Uh, I think the, the wider question that is being asked, and, and I think the vendors can answer this, are there any other units that allow the pairing of an external device in order to fill out the forms? So anything besides Nemo that would be compatible with something that an angler is already using? And I think another part of that, Emily, maybe more on point is, is there any is there any reason to think that Vessel or eTrips Mobile will be out of play anytime soon? Or is they're gonna go on for 
for many, many years. Is that right? That that is our understanding. Yeah, they are they are approved for the program, and um, but they're both very established companies that that you know have been working in the industry for a long, long time. Yeah, very good. Um, my salesman answer to that is: if you buy our device, you don't need to worry about the tablet. Everything's internal. <laughs> okay. Cool, but it does sound like maybe the Nemo unit is the only one that is readily pairable with with a personal device. On the on the SkyMate unit, a tablet is included. Um, you can go ahead and download the Vessel or eTrips apps onto that tablet, uh, and then it is your choice whether you want to continue using Vessel or eTrips, or you can use the SkyMate system to report directly. So, if you get go with that, you can do whatever whatever you feel like that day. Nice. And I think what's going to happen in the industry, to just some some insight for the future, is I think what's going to happen is you're going to find something called one-stop reporting starting to emerge. So where a fisherman maybe have to re be reporting to their local state, to a regional body, um, it'll evolve over time, but soon it'll be less burden on the fishermen so they can make one entry and magically in the cloud that that form submission will go to the various regulatory bodies and agencies that need that information. So I think that's where we're trending towards as a, you know, as a group of, of vendors in this industry, which is right. very exciting stuff. And I think a good regional example would be HMS reports being integrated into the, the refish requirements for the Gulf of Mexico, um, where you'd only have to do one report. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so moving on, it looks like Jeff White's, uh, um, you are unmuted, Jeff. Excellent, thank you. Um, I just wanted to respond to the question of, you know, what, how long folks are going to be around. So, Safest eTrips is created by the Atlantic Coastal Cooperative Statistics Program. So, that is the Atlantic Fin, uh, similar to Gulf Fin. Um, we've been around since 95 and uh, as a coordinating agency for other fisheries management agencies will be around. So uh, eTrips will be around, it is OSR compliant um, and uh, will is kind of the a default free option uh, that's available. However, it does not complete the VMS requirement for the always on pings. And so pairing uh, with the VMS component um, is, is a piece that's absolutely necessary and i want to recognize that so um thanks again for bringing up osr uh and uh giving me the opportunity to add that point have a great one thanks thanks jeff okay so i see mark greer and then chris phillips mark go ahead you're unmuted hey i i missed a question or that nick said something about the airtime 349 and then per year 249 i need to reconfirm that because i think you said per month on 349 for airtime and the other one you said per year and so I misunderstood something in there I made notes as you were saying forgive me I, I may have not been properly caffeinated at the time but yes it's 349 per year so it's a single transaction an annual subscription um, and you don't have that that monthly administrative bill or burden of paying a monthly bill so 349 for the year and that's for the Full cellular coverage, the satellite assistance and distress when you're beyond the cellular footprint, and of course your your software login to the portal to view your your vessel tracks. Awesome, thank you. Okay, and then to Chris Phillips. Chris, you are unmuted. Hey, my, I just have a quick question for Bill. I, I have my what will be my installer for my boats here. Um, what does he need to do to become, I, I guess, a certified installer or whatever? Good question, Chris. If he reaches out to uh, to me directly or through tech support at um we can talk to him about being um, qualified and certified as one of our installers. And obviously, it's it's not going to take much with the power and ground. Okay, 
Awesome. Well, I don't see any more hands and we've sort of up against our time limit here. So Carly, if you want to sort of let everybody know when we're doing this again and, and wrap us up. Sounds good, Emily. Thanks. So uh, we will be doing our next one. Uh, and actually, uh, there's only two. So it will also be our last one um, on October 12th from 6 to 730 Eastern time. So just make note of that. So, you know, if you're in Central or anywhere else, it'd be a bit earlier. So October 12th, 6 to 730 Eastern time. Um, and just to wrap everything up, I see, Rich, do you have a quick um, comment? Me, uh... Rich, you're unmuted, Rich. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks for this. It's been great, and uh, I, we really appreciate it. Just wanted to let you know that at 12 o'clock, if you want to stay in meetings, Andy Strelchak, our regional administrator, is having the uh, Gulf constituent call, so in regard to this subject, and there might be some questions and and answers there that you might not have heard or some you know some things come up so if you want to join in that call you can jump on our website and and find the link to that and uh thank you again and have a great day everyone thanks rich yeah thanks for adding that rich that's a um good reminder for everyone that you know public vendors everyone uh you want to hop on and and do more of uh q a about these c fire requirements so we'll wrap this up since i know we're up against the clock um Thanks to everyone who attended. Uh, thank you to all the vendors, um, everyone who presented. We really appreciate it. And we will be back on the 12th to do this again. Um, so yeah. th thank if you, you all. If you it useful, uh, make sure that you tell other captains in your area that we're doing this again on, on the 12th at 6 p.m. Eastern time, okay? So they might want to come over and listen as well. And we'll, uh, I'll, I'll send out a follow-up email with um, uh, the the, the presentation, the intro presentation, and any other pertinent information so that you can all have it. Uh, thank you, everyone. Right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, thank Emily. You, thank you, Carly. Thanks, ladies. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.